build up spiritual practice. Ask questions. Hi, this is JG from Austin, Texas. Where do I come from? This is a big question. Where would I go after death? Another big question. All religions try to provide answers to these two questions. What is a Buddhist answer to these questions? We need to find the answers ourselves. The Buddha's teaching serves as a guide to solve the riddle of life. So when people ask us, "Why do you learn Buddhism?" automatically we answer, "To get enlightenment, of course." But what is enlightenment? How to get enlightenment? There is neither an immediate. Nor a concise answer. We need to build up spiritual practice to find the answer. We may start from asking questions. It is believed that small questions lead to small awakenings. Major questions lead to major awakenings, while no questions leads to no awakening. So it is very important that we ask questions to explore. The riddle of life, the process of puzzle solving, could be the journey to awakening. There was a famous Chinese poet Su Dongpo, who lived in the 11th century China. He befriended himself with some Tang Buddhist masters. His understanding about awakening in Buddhism was revealed in his poems. Here are three of his popular poems that demonstrate three phases of awakening. The first phase, before learning Chan, a major from a cross, but a peak from the side, far, near, high, and low, each a view by sight. Why has one failed to see Mount Lu's real face? Or Only because right inside Mount Lu he is. The poet asks a question: Why has one failed to see Mount Lu's real face? Mount Lu is like our Buddha nature. We cannot see the real face of our Buddha nature. Why? If we pick up any moment in life or anything we experience in life, and we claim that. Is the real face of life? Then we are very ignorant about life. Life changes moment by moment. How can we see the real face of life? For example, I live in Austin, Texas. The sky in Austin is very beautiful. Often times, it seems that I could touch the white clouds floating against the blue sky. But you may not appreciate this. As how I look at it, when I look at the sky in Austin, I describe its beauty subjectively. I make the comment that the sky in Austin is very beautiful, which is a general compliment, which can be a partial and superficial compliment too. If I want to explore the real face of the sky in Austin, I would need to take off my subjective viewpoint. So before awakening, ordinary people see the phenomenal world subjectively, partially and superficially. We do not learn to see the external world with our Buddha nature inside. Though the Buddha nature is inside us, we are clouded by our ignorance, just like seeing Mount Ru's range and its peak from far, near. High and low, but still we cannot get a clear picture of Mount Lu. How do we decloud the mist that permeate everywhere at Mount Lu? The second phase, before awakening, after learning Buddhism. Misty rains of Mount Lu, entice in Zhejiang. Unless really there, a thousand resentments will linger. Having finally arrived, everything seems purposeless. Still, the misty rains of Mount Lu, 
steal the tides in Zhejiang. Why the first line and the last line of the poem are identical? Why, having finally arrived, everything seemed purposeless? What are a thousand resentments linger in a person feel like? Before he or she witnessing misty rains of Mount Lu and tides in Zhejiang in person, having practiced Buddhism for some time, most of us will find that there is not much change in our life. We still need to eat when we are hungry, sleep when it's time to go to bed, work when the office hours begin, and talk when people greet us, etc. If we are students, we still need to complete our study at school. No matter how many Buddhist sutras we have studied or how many meditation retreats we have completed, if we are parents. We still need to take care of our kids, no matter how many prostrations we have done in front of the altar, or how many Buddha's names we have recited. Life goes on. Then, what is the difference between awakening and after learning Buddhism? Before we witness misty rains of Mount Lu and tides in Zhejiang in person. There are all kinds of thoughts, ideas, imagination, and expectation about them. Resentments linger in our mind because we want to see the misty rains of Mount Lu and tides in Zhejiang, but we haven't made it yet. Therefore, desires arise. When our desires cannot be satisfied, griefs, sorrows, worries, doubts, uncertainties. And pains occupy our mind. All kinds of resentments linger and stay in our mind. It has to wait until we visit Mount Lu in person, bathing in the misty rains there, or go to Zhejiang to witness the spectacular high tides prompted by the merge of river into the ocean. Then the resentment would dissolve into the heart of quenching serenity. Surprisingly enough, the poet wrote, "Having finally arrived, everything seems purposeless." We are very curious to ask the poet why everything seems purposeless after one finally sees the beauty, beautiful scenery in person. Everything should have a purpose for its existence. If everything is purposeless. Then what is the purpose of visiting the site in person? It is important to visit the site in person. Only those who have been there are qualified to say that everything seems purposeless. The external scenery remains the same, but those who have visited the site in person have experienced the change inside his mind. It's the mind that has changed. The world outside still remains the same. The internal world, the mind, matures after learning and practicing Buddhism. The teaching of Buddhism enables us to see things differently. The subjective perspective has changed to an objective one. The partial viewpoint has come to a holistic one. The superficial sight has changed to a profound vision. The mind learns how to see the phenomenal world as they really are. We still undergo the life process of birth, aging, sickness, and death, but we can take it peacefully without resentments. The eight wind of praise, rid ridicule, defamation, honor, gain, loss. Sorrow and joy will not sidetrack our faith in the truth. We see life as it is. There is nothing particularly different in the external world. That is why the poet wrote the last line: "Still the misty rains of Mount Lu, still the tides in Zhejiang." Third, the third phase after awakening. The babbling creeks 
are his broad, long tongue. The scenic mountains are none but his pure body. Nightfall brings eighty-four thousand gattas. In the days ahead, how should such be presented to all? After awakening, we will not keep the awakening to ourselves. We want to share the joy of awakening with others. This is what a bodhisattva practitioner should do. Out of compassion, we are very eager to share the Dharma joy of awakening with others. So we keep asking the question: How should such be presented to all? The babbling creeks are the teaching of the Buddha. The scenic mountains are the Dharma teachers. The phenomena that we see in the daytime continues to teach the Dharma at night. Day and night, we merge ourselves in the sea of Dharma. We purify our behavior, speech, and thought day and night. Awakening is definitely not for individual only. To perfect the awakening. We further our reach to the community, the society, the country, and the world. This is the same question that Shakyamuni Buddha asked himself after he got enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. He observed the faculties of the people that he knew in his surroundings. Then he worked out the formula of the Four Noble Truths, the Noble Eightfold Path. The law of dependent origination, the law of cause and effect, the law of karma, etc. The question that the Buddha held to himself had led to the pedagogy that proves to be truthful and applicable in Buddhist history till today. Where do I come from? Where would I go after death? Prince Siddhartha must have asked these questions. Hundred and thousand times in his numerous lifetimes before he got the full enlightenment. These questions had led him to explore the riddle of life. We are very lucky that we have the auspicious opportunity to learn Buddhism in the twenty-first century. The Buddha has shown us the approach to find the answers. Let's keep asking questions, big or small, and finding the solutions based on the Buddha's guideline. Ask, ask, and ask. Small questions lead to small awakenings. No matter how small a question it can be, if possible, ask major questions, which will lead to major awakenings. But do not keep silent. No questions, no awakening.